Murderabilia. Murderabilia. It's a disturbing hobby, collecting murderabilia. There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Boys along the street and swatted them like flies. The same body parts, such as uh, skulls. We are in Manchester, Tennessee, right across from Pete Sane Road, the house where Gregory Scott Hale murdered, dismembered, and cannibalized a woman. Police say a woman has been murdered and dismembered in Coffee County. Authorities say 37-year-old Gregory Scott Hale admitted to the crime. According to an affidavit, Hale told investigators he dismembered the woman's body and buried her torso in a burn pile at his home. He also admitted to eating part of the victim after murdering her. Police have not released the name of the woman. My name is Chad Shepard. I am a co-owner of Offbeat Oddities and Collectibles. I am Chelsea Shepard and I'm one of the co-owners of Offbeat Oddities and Collectibles. Offbeat Oddities and Collectibles is a, uh, I guess, a brand that my husband and I started several years ago. We sell true crime artifacts that can be anything from serial killer artwork to death row artwork to dirt from a kill site. My favorite artifact that I've collected thus far that we had in our possession would probably be the shoes that Gary Ray Bowles, a uh, serial killer, was executed in Florida. They came along with his, uh, uh, the, a copy of the death certificate and all the paperwork from his lawyer. The more notorious the murders, the more, the more value that murderabilia holds. Our very first piece of murderabilia was a two-page front and back letter from a serial killer called Jack Trawick. He was out of Alabama and he went into extreme detail about some of his murders. And that was pretty, it was pretty disturbing. It was pretty hard to stomach reading some of it. We've had a Zoom call with a kind of alleged serial killer that's currently out of prison. This is why the prosecution decided not to pursue the cannibalism thing. And anyways, it was a minor thing compared to the murder. So they decided to prosecute the murder. I was convicted of murder, but not cannibalism. We specifically went to Arthur Shawcross uh, sites and, you know, the, his first two victims were children. And we ended up going to one of those sites and we didn't take anything from it because the reality sunk in that while we were there, an eight year old girl lost her life because of this monstrous person. And it didn't feel right. We have a girl, a little girl the same age. So, yeah, it's it really weighs heavy on you sometimes. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, hey my name's Chad, a, a filmmaker out of Nashville, Tennessee, and we're doing a spot on true crime, and we're trying to locate the liquor store involved in, like, the Gregory Scott Hell case. Uh, I don't know if that was, I, I think it was Oak Liquors. It was what? It was Liquors, I think so. I don't know for sure. I know the guy. I remember talking about the guy who cut up the girl and stuff. Yeah. Is, listen, there are dangerous people out there. They live next door to us. This woman, the woman that was killed, met this guy in a liquor store. I Supposedly back in like 2014, he met a woman at this liquor store and then took her to his house where he murdered and dismembered her. Scott. Scott, yeah. Yeah, I remember Scott. Scott Hale, right? Yeah, Scott Hale. You yeah. Step outside. yeah, yeah. Dude, they came up here like two days before that. Yeah. I do remember, but they had been hanging out for a while. And dude, he is really like a pretty soft guy. Yeah. I, so it's somebody you would have never expected, huh? No, I think he just shit himself. I think they were doing something a little kinky, and I think he got scared and decided to try to dispose of it. Yeah. I don't. I don't even think he would have eaten her if you didn't know him. Yeah. He didn't. Eat. You think all of that? I, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We did jam together a whole bunch, and he was goofy as fuck, and was always cutting up. But he just had a dark sense of humor and shit. I still kind of think uh, what happened was they were just doing some kinky sex shit and because uh, they were both into that, she was very adamant about that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. And uh, she would, she didn't hesitate to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And she'd do it when there was a bunch of people in there too. And uh, I still think what happened was they were fucking around and they probably were doing some dope or something like that. Yeah. And she wound up fucking, they wound up, he strangled her first. Yeah. I think it was all just sex or whatever. And then he shit himself trying to be like, oh my God. After she had died, he tried to cover it up. That's what maybe. He was always, he was always like, he, was, he would literally hook you. Yeah. Well, 
Would you ever read the quote where he said that he'd hug people to kind of figure out how big he needed to dig a, dig a hole? You want to try this cell yeah, phone let's try it. It's worth trying, right? The I mean, worst thing to do is tell us fuck off, and if so, I understand, you know, so. If it gives us closer on the property, then it's at least worth that. It's got to be wild living there after that happened. Because you know they think about that shit every day. Yes, yeah, I was. I've found this number on the internet associated with the property at 750 Pete Sane Road. Is this the right number? Yes. Where are uh, some filmmakers from uh, Nashville? We're doing a spotlight on like true crime. I didn't know if you guys had lived there for a long time or. Hello. Mm, there's your answer. There's the answer. Damn. Man, he sounded sad. He almost felt bad. Yeah. All right, so we're not getting anywhere with that. We at least want to get some footage of uh, the backyard. That's where... Um, we got to get some dirt, first of all. Some dirt. Like, we've, from, yeah. we've come all this way. So the goal was to get dirt. For the purpose of selling. Yeah. So we came all this way. Um, there is a side road. We should be able to, it's a long driveway, so we should be able to go like halfway down, see the fire pit area, and at least collect dirt as close to that as possible. It'd be closer than the front yard, in my opinion. Without disturbing anyone. We're getting some dirt right now. We're probably about 50 to 75 feet from the fire pit. From inside the fence as well. Yeah. So we just got back from visiting Manchester, Tennessee, where we went to uh, Gregory Scott Hale's home, or former home, I guess, where he uh, killed or strangled, dismembered, and buried and allegedly cannibalized. Allegedly. His victim, allegedly. Um, so, how do you think it went? Thoughts? I think it went great, to be honest. Learned a lot about yeah. old Scott, things that we didn't know before. It's definitely a new experience for me. Thank things, you we, for that. things we didn't Learned want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we did the best we could with the tools we had. We made some phone calls, we tracked down the liquor store. I mean, we couldn't have been better meeting someone who actually was in a band with yeah. him and had an yeah. insight on what kind of person he was. So I think it went pretty well. And we still have some leads out there. I gave the guy the phone number. Maybe we hear back from some uh, some other people. Maybe yeah. we get a different artifact. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe the haunted places call back. So we might have a couple more things to add. Yeah. So the hardest part is going to be editing this to only 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, but we did it. We're back. We're safe. Our first daytime hunt with people interaction. Yeah. Yeah. I think it went over well. And really bringing great. somebody with us, too. Yeah. yeah. It was a good work, team. Yeah. That was good. Bam. Oh! oh. One more time. Oh! Yeah.